In this video, we're going to talk about the uh, colours of titanium complexes. And we're going to start with aqueous titanium chloride. And titanium chloride, when it's dissolved in water, it's TiCl3, in water, is best represented by this picture. We start with square brackets with titanium, and we have six waters and outside the square brackets we have three unidentate chloride ions which therefore means that everything inside the brackets adds up to being three plus. Now the normal way that we represent six of anything around a central metal is using an octahedron. So the titanium sits at the center of the octahedron and on it at the end of each bond we will have a water. You notice that the waters are all oxygen bound to the titanium and there's part of our square bracket with the three plus and the chlorides are floating around around the outside just drawn in by the natural attraction towards the 3 plus central charge. Now you know that titanium is a transition element and you probably know that that means it has access to d orbitals and the d orbitals are of this general shape where you have a, a double lobe and a d orbital usually has two of these for each orbital. If we were to consider just a sort of idealized view of the transition metal, central metal, sitting with six waters around it, we could picture it as uh, perhaps a golf ball of titanium sitting perfectly in the middle of a basketball of six water molecules, the basketball being a shell where the six water molecules are evenly distributed. If that was the case, then the interaction between the uh, electrons of the water and the electrons on the titanium will be evenly distributed throughout. And so the d orbitals, uh, of which we know we have five, would all be of equal energy, said to be degenerate. Unfortunately, that ideal picture is not quite true, and we go back to our octahedral shape, where some of the orbitals will lie exactly along the titanium oxygen bond and they will cause the energy of those orbitals to raise slightly whereas if the orbitals were lying between the bonds and so like this they would actually lower the energy slightly so in fact these five degenerate orbitals now become two higher and three lower and they're given the labels EG and T2G which you'll learn about in more detail later on. The size of the gap between these orbitals as always is given by E equal to H nu which is HC over lambda the wavelength of, of the light. It so happens that the light that could uh, be absorbed to get from lower to upper state is in the visible range. It's the light that we can see. And what happens is that electrons will ab uh, absorb some of the visible light, sunlight, and make the jump from the ground state to the excited state and our eyes detect the light that is reflected back uh, having had uh, some of the absorbed light subtracted from it. And that's why we often describe transition elements as being colourful. It's not the only cause of colour, but uh, it is one of the significant features of transition elements. The size of the gap will depend on the ligand. So in this case we'll be looking at water. And so we would expect 
all titanium hexacro ions to have the same colour, regardless of whether they have chlorides, iodides or any other non-interfering anions uh, present. Now you might well ask which electrons uh, are the ones making the uh, jump. If you look at the periodic table on the left hand side then you will see potassium, calcium, scandium, titanium and so on for the rest of the transition elements. Being four columns over we know that titanium zero has four electrons and so if we take three electrons away to get to titanium three plus then we know that we have one electron left and so it is described as a D1 system. You'll learn more about the order of taking electrons away with regard to which orbital but essentially the transition elements are uh, all considered D n where n is the number of electrons that are, are left uh, after this ionization has taken place. So our d1 electron will normally sit into the ground state unless it's excited by some visible light in which case it could then end up in the excited state. And that will give us the color characteristic of the water. If we change to another ligand and in this case we're going to be looking at urea which has this structure and the oxygen here can behave just like it did in the water and bond onto the titanium and so we're going to be making titanium with six urea molecules around it. Again it's titanium 3 plus. This time we actually use iodides as the way to uh, crystallize out the material but the experiment that we're going to be look looking at is going to look at the stability of the titanium urea uh, species in the presence of water and we will be using visible spectroscopy to uh, see what's going on.